Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Warlords of Draenor Dungeon Guide. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Heroic Mode version of Orkin Down, which can be located in Talador on Draenor. Now in total, this dungeon has got four bosses, and if you'd like to skip to a specific boss guide, then please do use the annotations that are on screen now. Alternatively, if you'd like to view a written version of this guide, then there's a link available in the video description below, or you can head on over to flaskup.com and click on the Dungeons tab at the top of the page. The first boss in this dungeon goes by the name of the Vigilant Cathar, and despite only having four core abilities that he's going to throw at your raid, poorly timed execution and movement can lead to an instant wipe. The first ability you're going to have to be aware of is called Consecrated Light, as this ability has the ability to deal high amounts of damage to all of your party members in a very short space of time. Now, Consecrated Light is a 9 second channeled cast which can't be interrupted and will inflict increasing holy damage to anyone that's in the party for a period of 9 seconds. Now, how do you dodge this you might be asking? Well, thankfully the Protector has got a short temper and he'll throw his massive shield at one of your party members with his ability Holy Shield. Now this will cause him to target the location of someone in your group and it creates a kind of line of sight between him and the shield. So naturally when he starts casting Consecrated Light, you want to be ready to move behind the shield as soon as possible. Once the cast is finished for Consecrated Light, you can move out and spread out again and you also want to make sure that you are moving in a smart way because of the other abilities that are going to be going off. The next ability that you're going to have to dodge and avoid is called Sanctified Strike, which is a slight flashback to the Lyshen encounter in the Throne of Thunder raid. And the Sanctified Strike is a kind of whip animation in front of the Vigilant Cathar in the kind of lightning-y manner like the lightning whip was on Lyshen. You'll begin to see the cast animation for Sanctified Strike on the ground, and then a few seconds later the ability will go off, so you do have time to move from it in order to avoid taking any damage. And his final ability is called Hallowed Ground, and this will cause the Protector to begin spawning an orb of energy at a player's current location, and after a few seconds, if the player is still standing there, it will explode and deal high damage to anyone that's within 8 yards. Now it's very obvious to see when this orb has spawned underneath you, and as soon as it spawns, you simply need to move away from it as fast as you possibly can. Obviously the spawning times of the Hallowed Ground and also the Holy Shield and Consecrated Light can sometimes conflict with each other, so you do need to be careful of your positioning. Now, on Heroic Mode, he has an additional ability called Fate, and this will cause him to detonate any of the Hallowed Ground orbs that are on the floor when the spell is cast. Now because of this, you do have more room to move around eventually, but you need to make sure that you are not standing near any of the orbs when he is about to cast his fate ability, as it will blow them up, and if you're within 8 yards, you're going to take a very high amount of unnecessary nature damage. This is kind of your standard, don't stand in the fire mechanic for this encounter. The second boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Soulbinder Niami, and throughout the fight, she's going to summon different spirits into the encounter in order to stop you from progressing any further in Orkendown. Now, as mentioned, throughout the fight, the Soulbinder will cast her Torn Spirits ability, which will cause her to summon three spirits into the fight, which are going to attack players. Ideally, you want to kill these off as soon as possible due to the amounts of damage that they can potentially deal to people. Every now and then, the spiteful Arbiter ad will cast an ability called Arbiter's Hammer, which is going to stun a random member of your party, and they will also randomly charge at a target while casting an ability called Radiant Fury. Unfortunately, the stun player is just going to have to stand there and be stunned for the duration, but if Radiant Fury is going off near you while the Arbiter is running around like a madman, you will be able to see kind of yellow prisms of energy coming out from his run location on the ground. You simply need to move away from this as fast as possible due to the damage it's going to deal. Now the Twisted Magus ad can cast an ability called Arcane Bolt, which you should interrupt as much as possible in order to reduce the overall party damage, and you should also move away from his Arcane Bomb ability when it does spawn. It's fairly obvious where it does spawn, as there is a massive animation on the ground. 
Now, while everything else is going on with the adds, the Soulbinder is also going to cast an ability called Soul Vessel, which will spawn a protected bubble on the ground with an arrow above it. Now, after a few seconds, she will begin to cast Pulsating Shadow Damage on your party, and the only way to do this is to actually move into her ability, which is the bubble, and you will take a massive amount of reduced damage from the shadow damage she is dealing. So she starts dealing shadow damage, there's a bubble up with an arrow above it, move under it, take less shadow damage, your healers don't cry. It's quite simple really. Now as for Niami's other spells, you simply need to heal through the mind spike damage, or try and interrupt the cast as much as possible, and your healer is also going to want to dispel the Shadow Word Pain debuff off players as soon as possible in order to reduce the overall party damage. Now, there are no notable changes for this encounter on Heroic Mode, but you do need to keep in mind that because it is Heroic Mode, things will deal more damage, so the DPS is a bit tighter, and again, the healing requirements are higher. The third and penultimate boss in this dungeon goes by the name of Azakel, who is the vanguard of the Legion. And with a badass name like that, you'd kind of hope that he does, you know, hurt you in a way. Not mentally, but you know, physically in the game, and he does. This is quite an intense fight to a certain extent. Now, throughout the fight, Azakel is going to summon demons into battle. Now he will periodically become immune and fly up in the air when you can't attack him and he will summon blazing tricksters, cackling pyromancers and fell guards in order to aid him in battle. You will want your tanks to pick up the fell guards as soon as they spawn and prepare for heavy incoming damage. Now the fell guards shouldn't be your highest priority to kill, you want the blazing tricksters to be the highest priority because they spawn and they will begin casting an ability called fell blast. And as you probably learned from the trash before this boss, Fell Blast hurts. So you need to make sure that you've got people with interrupts, interrupting both of them that spawn, and then DPSing them down as fast as you can. The Tricksters should be of the highest priority to deal with. Now once you've killed off the Tricksters, you want to kill off the Fell Guards, and then you should be killing off any remaining Cackling Pyromancers if Dots haven't already done the damage. You want to make sure you're not getting too close to the Pyromancers, because they have an ability called Conflagration, which will cause you to become disoriented and take damage if you do come into contact with them. Now throughout the fight, Azakel is going to randomly cast an ability called Fell Lash on his target, and you simply just need to heal the player through this damage that is being dealt to them. He's also going to put a debuff on players called Curtain of Flame, and this will be placed on random players in the party, and if you get this debuff on you, you need to make sure that you're not standing near anyone else, as they will take damage from it, and it will also spread to that other player. Again, this debuff is something that simply has to be healed through. It's quite obvious to see when you've got it on you as well, as you get a kind of green aura and explosion coming out of your person. Azakel also casts an ability called Malevolent Crash, which causes him to jump to a location, and once this has been cast, you want to make sure you're not standing in the fell pool that will spawn underneath it, as it will cause you to take damage every second, and, you know, your standard do not stand in the fire mechanics do apply here. Now, on the heroic mode version of this fight, you're going to have to deal with a new ability called Fell Spark, and this is basically going to cause more fire to be spawned on the ground, and once again, you need to avoid standing in this fire, as it will deal a moderate amount of damage to you every second. Now, because of the amount of fire you're going to get in heroic mode, you want to try and move your party as one around the room, so that when he casts his Malevolent Crash, the Fell Pools are kind of placed in a smart area, and not like in the middle of where you're going to run next, and try and keep them as close together as possible, so that you do give yourselves more room to move around the room which you fight Azakel in.
And once you've defeated the vanguard of the Legion, Azakel, you then move on to the final boss in this dungeon, who goes by the name of Terran Gore. Now, this is a two-stage fight, and in the first phase, you're going to fight Terran Gore in his normal form. And while you're doing this, he will cast a range of abilities at you that you have to either interrupt or move away from. Now, the abilities that you need to be interrupting are called Shadow Bolt, which is, you know, a basic Warlock damage in ability. And you also need to make sure Corruption is dispelled from players, and also Drain Life is interrupted as well. Now, because Drain Life will also heal Terran Gore, you want to make sure this is your priority for interrupting. When he casts Rain of Fire, you simply need to move away from where he's casting it, or interrupt him. Once he hits 75% health, he will then gain the powers of either a Demonology, a Destruction, or an Affliction Warlock, and heal back up to full health. The fight will then continue into Phase 2. Now, unfortunately, we've only got footage for one part of the fight here, and the rest of it is kind of the same just you know interrupting and moving away from different abilities if terangor gains the powers of mender ilum he will effectively become an affliction warlock and he will gain shadow bolt which should be interrupted as much as possible curse of exhaustion which should be decursed but you don't need to worry about it too much as it doesn't deal too much damage seed of malevolence which will cause players to explode after 18 seconds so it's a debuff that gets placed on people and then before it runs off you just need to move away from anyone else in the party. He'll also place an ability called Agony on people, which simply has to be healed through. He will also cast Drain Life, as he did in Phase 1, which you need to interrupt as much as possible in order to stop him from healing. And finally, he will cast Unstable Affliction, which should be dispelled from players as soon as possible. However, people should be spread out when this is dispelled, as it will deal AoE damage when it is removed from them. In a nutshell, if he becomes an Affliction Warlock, spread out, dispel, and interrupt as much as possible. If Terangor takes on the powers of Arcanist Jura, he will become a Destruction Warlock, and you'll have to deal with Chaos Bolt, which should be interrupted as a priority, and when possible, by players due to the high amount of damage that it does deal. Immolate, which should be dispelled as soon as possible in order to reduce the overall party damage that's going out. Conflagrate, which should be dispelled in order to reduce the overall party damage again. Rain of Fire, which will target a location and people simply need to move away from it. And finally, an ability called Incinerate, which people should be moving from if it does go through as a cast. Otherwise, you should be interrupting as much as possible. And finally, if Tarangor takes on the powers of Vindicator Iron, he will become a Demonology Warlock. Now if this does happen, he will cast Curse of Exhaustion, which should be decursed, but not as a priority because it doesn't deal too much damage. Demonic Leap, which means you should spread out so that no more than one person gets hit by it. Doom, which simply has to be healed through, and any personal cooldown should be used in order to reduce the damage taken. Corruption, which should be dispelled from players as soon as possible. Chaos Wave, which can be avoided by standing at a distance from the boss and moving to the side when the wave is coming towards you. And finally, Touch of Chaos, which simply has to be healed through. Now, it is worth noting that there are currently no major differences in the Heroic Mode version of this fight, but you should keep in mind that all abilities will be dealing significantly more damage. So that's going to wrap it up for this Warlords of Draenor dungeon guide for Orkin Down. As always, thank you for watching, and if you would like to view a written version of this guide, then you can click on the link that's in the video description below, or head on over to flaskup.com and go to the drop down at the top of the page that reads Dungeons. Additionally, if you'd like to be up to date for when we released further Warlords of Draenor guides such as Dungeon Guides and Raiding Guides, please do feel free to subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.